I have the FMS Ranger ready to fly, RTF, which means it comes with everything. Literally everything but the skill to fly it, and that's, uh, that, that's on you. FMS sent me this plane after I did a whole mess of videos using one of their planes, that you know, the Ranger, on a whole host of how-to videos for the new pilot. And they asked me to kind of put together a review of this. And it's more of, it is a review, but it's also all the build, all the little things that I did uh, to get this thing flying the way I want. The radio that comes with it, you know, there's some caveats around it. It is not a $500, you know, high-end radio. It's pretty inexpensive, uh, but for $250, you have everything you need to fly this thing off the runway, off grass, and with the pontoons, snow or water. Pretty good deal. So, I hope you stick around to the end where I kind of go over all those t extra tips and tricks. Stick around. All right, I'm gonna go through the unboxing. I don't normally do this because there's so many unboxing videos out there, but I want to have one video that shows everything. So here we go. Uh, most of, I'll talk through a little bit, but most of what I've seen on all the FMS planes I have, and I have quite a few, is they do a pretty darn good job of keeping the plane safe during transport. And this plane, this is the second time I've opened up one of these, is no different. Notice how, I mean, they put on a fair amount of foam to keep things from scratching. This is all taped up so it doesn't bang on anything and gets something to scratch up other parts. This is painted, so this, you scratch it, and it's very noticeable. You'll notice there is nothing. No scratches, no nothing looking really good. Continue to go through the process and pull out this wing. And again, very, really good. Uh, that's what I've noticed with most of the FMS stuff. So let me go through and finish, open up everything. Not going in any specific order, just getting stuff out of here. Uh, here is a whole mess of documentation. Hold on to that. You're going to need it. We have a battery charger. Yep, this thing comes with a charger. We will find out how well that all works. Uh, we'll go through and test this. I'm going to put that through its paces as well. comes with a radio transmitter. And so I'm going to go through this whole process of setting this up and really kind of go through the, the, the pros and cons of something like this. These are obviously, you know, the range isn't going to be great. The performance isn't going to be good. But the fact that you have a box that comes with every single thing you need from a battery uh, for the plane and a transmitter and the receiver, there's some pluses with that. And to get you everything you need, all configured, especially for this, it's not a bad deal. The whole thing is $250, at least at the time of filming, around there. If you buy it, uh, I have a, coup a coupon code basically uh, on my channel for like 10% off. Here it comes with a 1300 milliamp battery, plugs and pieces for the charger as well as maybe a receiver in here. I don't know. I'm going to go through this box or this bag of pieces. All right. So from a fuselage perspective, something that I think is interesting is this comes with both the reflex gyro, comes with a receiver, and everything's already plugged in. I'm going to double check all of that, make sure it all works, find the radio, get everything set up. I'll probably do a couple things to clean up some of the wiring, zip tie, attach antennas to the proper locations, things like that. But all in all, not too bad. Here is the battery compartment. <clears throat> Comes with some Velcro on sticky tape, which has come off. Uh, we will deal with that here in a little while. Uh, I'm gonna put that, well, I don't know where I'm gonna put that yet. 
we'll take care of that. There's a couple things I do to make sure it sticks to this wood and we'll go through that process also. So, elevator. Looks good. And then really I think the only things that are left in here, we've got the floats, which you know, I'll just tell you right now, I would definitely put some kind of either tape or something on this part of the float because in snow with a little ice, they get chewed up pretty bad. Uh, they work, but they do get chewed up. So room here that I can see it, the floats and some more float equipment. So that is the unboxing of this stuff. Okay, a couple things. We're gonna start assembling. Um, keep in note that we've got a handful of screws here, different size screws. These are the 10 millimeter, these are the 16 millimeter in length. Documentation tells you which one to put where. Keep note of that. We have a control rod and a clevis, which we'll be installing for the elevator. And we have a <clears throat> Y cable that we're gonna be using for the, here it says, for the rudder. So, I don't think that this is used for the rudder. I think this is gonna be used for the ailerons, but I could be wrong. We'll find out when we get there. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is put on the tail. In the documentation, the first thing it has you work on is the landing gear, but I like to have this this part all completed before I mess with the landing gear. So, so I have this halfway off. I'm trying to film it, which makes it harder. <laughs> and we're going to use long screws, 16 millimeter, in there, and there, and get these screwed down. There's a brass. fitting that this needs to get pushed into. Now, and I need to move this forward just a little bit because it's not seating. There we go. Now it is. Just make sure if you turn this thing a bunch of times, it's not biting your tail. is not aligned properly. So you're gonna to have to push that stabilizer in till it is. Now, once that's tightened, you don't need to go crazy with it. Just tighten it enough. It's not going anywhere. Okay, <clears throat> next part is the landing gear. I'm gonna push this like so. And you'll notice that there's a little cutout right there for the landing gear. Fits perfect. Doesn't fit any other way. Fits only one way right here. And you're tempted to put screws in there, in these holes right now. Don't do that. <laughs> you need to put this on first. Even though they're tapered there, and you would think that's what you're gonna do, don't. You're gonna push this on, and you're gonna push this on pretty tight. Without squishing and damaging the foam underneath, that's why I've got this pad. And you have small screws in the front, and longer screws. in the back. I'm going to tighten those down, make sure we're nice and snug. Again, if you wanted to use some Loctite, which I don't think is necessary here, you can. A little blue Loctite, a small dab of blue Loctite. And I tighten it down to when it's very snug. And I'll check to make sure everything's seated properly. Sometimes with these planes, it's tight, but it's still not seated. You need to use a little pressure and force to push 
foam and plastic pieces together. So I'm pushing on that. I'm pretty happy with that. So that's done. I mean, when you look at it, you have yourself partially built plane. So stick around. We're going to get the wings and get those all set up and ready to roll. As you build more and more of these models, you start developing a whole list of things that you like, things that you use for building tools and such. One of the things that is fantastic is this 3M Blenderm tape. A lot of uses for it. I'm going to use it. We're putting that over that so this doesn't peel out. These are, Blenderm is great for hinges. People sometimes call it hinge tape. It's super sticky, works exceptionally well. I'm going to do the same thing over here on that one. <clears throat> now, these struts are taped in. I'm going to keep them kind of taped in so they're not in my way. I'm going to pull this back. Pull this back and slide these together. One thing that I will say, and I make a note in one of my videos, there is no carbon fiber spar or fiberglass spar connecting the two of these. It's not there. These struts hold the wings in place. If these struts come off, your wings could just fold. So keep that in mind. To me, I think, you know, it'd be nice to have, <laughs> have some struts there, but I didn't design the plane, but I think it, it's good to have a little bit more stiffness. Now, that said, I have taken this plane the way it is. I've done outside loops with it. <laughs> I've done all kinds of stuff, and the wings held great, even after I plowed the plane through a tree. Well, the wings ripped off during that little incident, but... That's a whole other story. It's cold. Oh, boy, I'm screwed that up. All right, so wings still aren't, are, are very weak. One thing I would say to do is I want you to take this, gently rock it back and forth and try to pull, pull this piece of plastic out of the wing. Okay, try to pull it out. If it doesn't pull out, good. Go to the next one. Make sure it is glued in. And I'd rock it just ever so slightly. Right, right down here, rock it. Don't be moving this. Be very cautious, but pull on that. I had mine rip out after the crash. Of course, it was a hard crash, and mine tore out right there. There's also connection points in the fuselage. And the way that these connect, I also will pull on those areas as well just to make sure it doesn't rip out in flight. Guess what? We're ready to put the wings on and get this plane ready to go. Let me introduce you to a tool that I use on every plane. <laughs> now, i kind of got things a little rigged on it, but I have a speed controller attached to this guy, which is the Servo Tester. I use it all the time. And basically, I use it for testing servos, zeroing servos. What I mean by that is I want to make sure before I make any adjustments to any of the control surfaces that these servos, one, are working, and two, that they are in the neutral or zero position. Therefore, the, basically, then the control surfaces are going to be lined perfectly with the rest of the wing. A lot of times out of the factory, they might not be, and we'll have to make some adjustments uh, to sometimes I've had to pull off, you know, the servo arms and reattach them. Uh, might have to make some modifications and run the clevis in or out to make sure everything's perfect. So the first thing I'm going to do with my servo tester is plug these, these aileron servos in. There's a whole mess of different brands out there. This is the one I bought. It's cheap. I mean, literally, I, I don't know, 
less than 10 bucks. You gotta have a power supply for it, which is this old speed controller. And as soon as you turn it on, you've got a couple options. And, and like I said, they're all slightly different. I can mechanically turn these. I could test. Oh, well, the servos are working properly. There's also several different functions. At 1500, the servos are zeroed. And I'm going to just test real quick to make sure they're perfectly lined up, which they are, which FMS is generally very good at that. At least that's what I've seen with the last couple planes is that the control surfaces are lined up perfectly. But let's say I want to test the servos and kind of make sure they're working properly. This one has a system that it'll just run those servos at full extensions and it'll just keep running them until I stop it. And it's a good way if you wanted to test to make sure your servos are going to continue to run. You can run through that whole process. I don't know, let them run for 15 minutes or something. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to bring it back to neutral at 1500 and then I'm done pull the power and pull those servo leads. So now I'm going to reattach this to the fuselage and we'll be able to get the radio connected and do our next rounds of tests. Okay, a couple things. One is I've got batteries in the back. I turn this on. I have removed the prop because I'm going to power this thing up. Often, speed controllers need to be, you know, as far as they need to be calibrated for the radio. In order to do that, you need to push the throttle all the way to the top. And when you plug in, you're going to hear a beep. Maybe. <laughs> and then we're going to go all the way down. From that standpoint, I think the ESC is um, the ESC is calibrated. Uh, the control surfaces work, so this radio is bound. So it comes out of the factory already bound and ready to go. You don't have to go through a binding process. If you do need to do that, there's documentation that in the uh, you know there's information in the documentation to show you how to do that. And it does come with a bind plug. So now what I'm going to do is make sure since all the control surfaces, everything is already up, there should all be zeroed at least for the rudder and the elevator. I'm going to get the control rod hooked onto the servo and into the elevator in the right spot, make sure that's good. And then I'm going to start cleaning up everything. So the only thing that needs to be done uh, from, from a servo control perspective, because all control rods are already installed except this one here for the elevator. So I will tell you that you know, what the book calls for, manual calls for, is putting the control rod in the very top here and shove that in there, the top hole, and then it slides over. So you stick it in and it just slides right over. Tricky part here, it's not tricky, it's just fiddly, where you open up the clevis and you're going to put this in the top hole. But when you do that, you'll notice that the elevator is slightly pointing up. Well, you can't have that. Mechanically, we need to get this level. So the way we do that is pretty simple. We're going to take it off and I'm going to thread it in, tighten it in so it pulls the clevis towards here and in turn will change how the elevator positions at at zero or at neutral let's get it in the right hole here all right let's take a look at that eh, close just a little bit more if you look at all of these connections on the plane, which you must do. Any plane you get, you have to inspect this and scrutinize it. And sometimes foam does isn't always perfect, but the more attention you pay to, to this right here, the less issues you're going to have during the maiden. Really be meticulous about it. 
Yes, you have trim controls, but when you're maidening, and if you're a newer pilot, you know, it's a goat rodeo. So you want to minimize some of your stress. Anyway, so that's in. This little fuel tubing or little tubing around there slides forward a little. And what that does is if, let's say, a pin or something does break, this holds things together. Uh, it keeps it from coming out. Check all of this on all the control surfaces throughout the plane. All right, as you can see, we've got Velcro in. The receiver is tucked up right under here, attached to the wall side here. And we've got these antennas. This antenna, I'm going to tape underneath here. There's a little ridge under there. I just want this to be horizontal. And this one, we're going to figure out a way to place it vertically right along here. I don't know if you can see that with my big hand in the way, but anyway, that's how that's going to work. So we're going to get some Blenderm tape and attach those. Then I'm happy with the interior. We're ready to go. Going to install the wing, show you how to do that, and we'll go to the next step. When connecting these servos, and these are the only servos we need to really connect, everything has been done for us in the, as far as all the elevator, rudder, throttle, everything's already connected. These are not. It doesn't matter which one goes to which because it's a, this is a Y cable. So what I do is I typically, when I put things together, have yellow or the signal wire up. So I've got the signal wire on top, signal wire on top. It's really important that you match those. If you don't, it's servo won't work. So if you ever have a situation where you've plugged things together and the servos aren't working, like here, I just put it together, wasn't paying attention, brown on top, yellow on top, that won't work. Now it will. Push those together good and make sure the clips come down. You should be able to pull that. All right, got those all done. Now we'll get the wing on, which is an easy process. All right, so got this mess here. You can do a couple things. If you want to zip tie these together, that's fine. You can do that. When you're pushing these in the cavity here, make sure they all the wires go inside here. Because when you pull this back slightly, okay, now it's all keyed in, ready to go. Push those wires in and then lay the top down. I have it on my stand right now because the struts underneath keep hitting the table. You could do it on the corner of a table and let the struts hang down. That's another easy way to take care of that. Anyway, these go in and there's a little arrow that tells you which way to lock them in place. That's it. For the struts, you can see <clears throat> the camera just ever so slightly. These go in and back. Very specific how they go in. And you might have to use a little force to get them in, which is good because you don't want these coming out. Gonna do the other side. They slide in and push back. <clears throat> That's it. The plane is done. Try to get this on here without too much issue. Here we go. Okay. Now <clears throat> we're going to put the uh, prop back on and we're going to test everything. The way the props work, usually there's text on the prop. That usually on most props faces forward the direction the plane is going. There's a little 10-5 there, which means it's a 10-inch prop with a 5-inch pitch. And we're going to put this back together. The prop on. If you break a prop, which I suggest you buy a couple props, you can use the FMS prop, of course, buy another one. But there's also other 10.5s in other 
hobby shops made by APC and some others. They're good. I have found that these FMS props actually work pretty well. The nose cone kind of just pushes into place. It doesn't have any screws that hold it in place. It kind of locks in. Give it a little test and you'll make sure everything's spinning right. Okay, there it is. We're done. Next steps. <coughs> Take her up. I'm gonna get some good fly flybys. Optimized mode. Half throttle, she flies pretty, pretty easy. Be very gentle on the sticks. I've got the elevator and the aileron dialed down a bit. I am just barely moving anything on these things, on the sticks. Do some figure eights. Let's come in for a touch and go. Again, in optimized mode. Back and off throttle. Cutting back on throttle a lot. About a third throttle, I'm trying to slow her down, let her run down the runway a little bit. Let's bring her back down in front of us here. Cut back on throttle. Nice. Back on throttle again, cutting way back. Let her bring her in, lifting the nose up. Perfect. She will land slow. And this is all in optimized mode. Great little flyer, but you do need to back off on the control surfaces if you want to fly it and optimize. Just a little reminder, if you have a question, shoot me a comment, and of course, if you like the content of the video, hit that like button. Appreciate it. Nose up, and there she is. Wonderful flyer. And we're good. All right, I'm going to go over a couple things now. I'm going to go over, kind of summarize. First, I want to talk about the plane. Then I'm going to talk about the transmitter and then the battery and battery charger. Things to really keep in mind with the plane. One, it, it, the plane flies great. The radio system that is in it works great. I didn't have any issues other than the throws are really hard to handle for a new pilot. Uh, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble real fast and overcorrecting because there's a lot of throw in aileron, rudder, <laughs> and elevator, all over. It, it's a lot of throw. Uh, so I would absolutely, if you after you've flow, flown this in stabilized mode, which is like safe mode, if you're gonna fly it in any of the other modes, you're gonna have to dial down mechanically, adjust the control surfaces to dial that throw down. It's got way too much throw. Um, the next thing I would do from the plane perspective, obviously get some props, um, get some more batteries and so on. 
But this strut right here is critical. If this strut pops out and they don't stay in, I mean, they're, they're, they, they've locked in pretty well, but if something pulls out, you have got to land this plane quick because you're gonna rip those wings in half. Be gentle with it. If you see this thing dangling, be gentle, land it, repair it, go back up. All right, let's talk a little bit about the transmitter. This transmitter is as basic as basic is. There's no expo, there's no changing the, the gains or the, the rates, nothing. And in fact, in the front here, there's some switches. That's for reversing the servo. So, that this reminds me back in 2000 when I got into RC for the second time, GWS had these transmitters you can get with planes. They pretty much gave them away. 72 megahertz, we flew the heck out of this thing. And it's not a lot different than this from a simplicity standpoint. All right, did it get us flying and, and had fun with it? You bet it did. When I mentioned that these switches right here are for reversing, I highly recommend when you get that plane all set up, validate 100 times that the control surfaces are going the right way, put a piece of tape over this. After you're done flipping things around, put a piece of electrical tape over it so you can't accidentally flip that switch. Still, please do a control surface check. Um, the next thing I would say is over here is the stabilization. Okay, Mine was set up a certain way. Yours, I would say, check which stabilization mode is on top. Middle is off and the bottom is optimized. That's how they should be set up, but sometimes they're not. So double check that. Bunch of videos, I go over how to check that out. This switch does nothing. It's not a throttle kill. There is no throttle cut in this system. So be cautious of that. When you go to the, you know, don't plug your plane in, you know, in the pits. Plug it in right before you're gonna take off, okay? One more thing, there's no timer. So get in the habit of starting the timer on your, on your phone or something like that before you take off. Battery, battery charger. The battery and charger work great. They're slow. It's a 1300 milliamp battery. And this charger is gonna charge it up at a 0.8 rate. So it took over an hour to charge this thing up. So I, all I would say is, when you get this plane and you fly it, you're gonna to wanna to get some more batteries because this thing will drive you nuts. <laughs> It'll take too long to fly. You'll have five minutes of flight time on this and then you'll wait over an hour to charge it. So buy some more batteries. And while you're at it, if you're gonna get into this, get a good charger, spend a couple bucks. Spend 100, 150 bucks, get a good charger. You'll use the heck out of it. So. That's all I can say about the plane. It was a great plane for what it is. It's a beginner, uh, solid beginner plane. Works, flies great. With the radio system, it'll get you there. And hope that it'll get you to that next step where you're like, all right, now you're gonna buy some more planes, buy some more equipment, have some fun with it. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.